Last November, 24 students from the Nevada Union High School's debate team trekked down to Southern California in a 10-hour car ride to the University of Southern California. We were there for a policy debate tournament, and right before rounds began on Friday afternoon, our coaches received a call from the high school administration. There had been a bomb threat at the high school, and some of the debaters were suspects. Our coaches were to prohibit these students from debating. Never mind that these suspects were some of the best and brightest students at the high school. Never mind that no investigation had occurred, no suspects had been questioned, and no due process had been given. Never mind that these students had each spent $200 in hotel expense fees, tournament entry fees, and most importantly, Never mind that no bomb had been threatened. Let me back up for a minute. Last November, some of my friends and new students created and distributed flyers. These flyers had various images and quotes on them. One of the quotes was an excerpt from Allen Ginsberg's poem, Howl. The excerpt talks about, talks about the destruction of the best minds of the generation. According to Ginsberg, the best minds are not the elite, or those in positions of authority. The best minds are the world travelers, the bums, the political dissidents, the artists, the musicians, and the poets. Some of these flyers had the iconic mask from the movie V for Vendetta, accompanied by a modified quote from the movie. The quote said, the students should not fear the school. The school should fear the students. The message paralleled the message from the movie. The main character, V, lives in a fascist political state where uh, dissent is not tolerated. And my friends were expressing some things that they felt were similar um, at Nevada Union to uh, the, the state that V is in. Now, the purpose of distributing these posters was to grab students' attention and to ask fundamental questions. Who is in charge of our education? What kind of education are we receiving? And what are we doing to make sure that the education we receive is meaningful? My friends wanted other students to take active roles in educating themselves. The educational model that NU generally provides to its students could be classified as consume and regurgitate. It's about meeting standards and rote memorization. It's not teaching us how to learn and it's not teaching us valuable thinking skills. Instead of learning being equated with discovery, wonder, and amazement, learning is more frequently being equated with boring preparation for standardized tests. So while it fails at these key aspects, it does succeed in one area. It's teaching students to hate school. Consume and regurgitate can't help us solve problems that exist in the world. It's going to be critical thinking and substantive debate that's going to teach our young people to be able to become thoughtful world citizens. Mm -hmm. This type of education need not cost any more than the status quo education. In fact, in the long run, it will actually save us money because once we educate our young people to become active players in a growing world economy, that's going to benefit us. My friends wanted to shed light on this fundamental failure of our educational system and of our school. They were hoping to create a spark that would lead other students to becoming assertive and taking active roles in their education. Now, the administration had quite a different view of the event. They interpreted a call to assertive action as a threat of violence. In this time of fear and of violence, of ignorance of the other, all the administrators could see was a threat to the smooth, day-to-day -day running of their school. Originally, there was talk of expelling the students who were involved. But once the administration finally realized it was not a bomb, that they decided to suspend the students on the grounds that it incited others to violence, made the administration spend time picking up the posters, and it disrupted the educational process. Now, this line of thinking raises other questions, because if disrupting the educational process was grounds for suspension, 
then the administration really should have suspended itself. <laughs> October, all NU students were administered a cognitive abilities test created by a testing company that makes standardized tests to be used nationwide. Now, the testing lasted for two weeks. This was two weeks that students get, did not get to be in their English or history classes because the entire uh, class periods were consumed with testing. I decided to go talk to the administration to see what the purpose of taking this test was. I was told that the testing company was in the process of normalizing their test questions. I was also told that NU was receiving money for being part of this normalization process, and that we were chosen to normalize the test because we were one of the top schools in California. Now, this explanation didn't quite make sense to me, because if the testing company was normalizing their questions, they would not pick schools who were top performing because that, by definition, would not be normalizing their questions with the general population. The explanation that the principal gave to me made it clear to me that the administration had not taken the time to think through what the purpose of taking this test was. But the most frustrating part of it to me was that by law, we were not required to take this test. Law does require us to take state and national standardized tests. But the administration made a conscious choice to disrupt our educational process. I understand that budgets are tight, but was it really worth an aggregate of 20,000 days of educational time lost? That's 2,000 students, 10 days each. Also, the students haven't seen any benefit from the money that we received from the testing. So we need to ask what is the purpose of Nevada Union High School? For whose benefit does the school exist? The school should exist to benefit the students. That is the ultimate purpose of education. But when the administration and the students are like ships passing in the night, is there any possible way that it can benefit the students? In this disconnect, other things have gone by the wayside. My freshman English class was probably the most boring and unproductive class I've ever taken. Most days we filled out worksheets and answered questions modeled after state standards tests. Other days we read stories and answered questions also modeled after standards tests. And some days, if we'd been good, we watched America's Funniest Home Videos. That's what your tax dollars funded. <laughs> so I went up to the teacher and asked if the rest of the school year would be like this, and her response was that we need to teach to the lowest performing students. Now, the implied assumption was that low-performing students are only capable of filling out worksheets. I wonder if classes were engaging and engaged in critical thinking and created a culture of high expectations, might lower-performing students perform better? The really sad thing about this is that that class is not the exception, it's the rule. For most, at least freshman and sophomore classes, that's what it's like. As a junior last year, I took some classes, maybe half of my classes were similar. These two examples demonstrate the huge gap between the student's needs and the administration's values. You know that something is wrong at a foundational level when such drastic things are occurring that harm students' needs. This makes me wonder what the administration's think their job description is. And I think that the administration's purpose is to help provide the best possible education for students. But maybe we do have the same definition of the job description. We just have different interpretations. Obviously, they are attempting to create a safe environment for students to learn in. And this goal is commendable, whether or not their tactics are very admirable. But a change is needed. The administration and the students need to begin a dialogue. Meanwhile, I found other ways to engage in critical thinking outside the classroom. I joined the policy debate team, and I found a wonderful community of people who are engaged and who are interested in learning, who, quite, who uh, engage in critical thinking, and yes, they question the status quo. Critical thinking is not only encouraged in debate, it's demanded. I've learned more in debate than I would in ever, any classroom that I have ever been in. I also work on the youth politics and activism portion of Michael Moore's website. 
Our project, called the High School Newspaper, is run by teens for teens. It's a multimedia gathering place where we have an uncensored voice to highlight issues that we care about, discuss politics, and student and youth activism. Working with the High School Newspaper has really been an incredible experience. I've met and talked to many inspiring people. It gives me hope for the future when I meet other young people who are engaged and who are thinking critically and using those skills to change the world. I want to see this community of youth grow. I want to see it evolve and develop. And I firmly believe that we can change the world, but we can't do it alone. We need to create strong lines of communication between the students and the high school administration. We need the administration, the teachers, and the students to all be on the same side. We need them to help want to improve the type of education that we are getting at school. Ultimately, we are all in this together. So we must begin a frank and open dialogue about the change that we need. In the aftermath of a perceived bomb threat, all these questions become more pertinent than ever. We need to ask, what is so threatening about teaching our young people to engage in thinking critically? How do we expect to solve these huge problems we've created for ourselves? Global warming, the federal budget deficit, trade imbalances, religious fundamentalism, wars based on greed and oil, racism, sexism, classism. We need young people to develop engaged minds. Only then will we truly be educating students for today's world and for the future. Thank you.